Hello everybody and welcome to another brand new edition of T Watches a Scary Movie. My name is T and of course we are talking scary movies. I appreciate you tuning in for another brand new review. Remember, new episodes go up every Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. But as I'm dropping more than that Wednesday night review for you, I do a bunch of reviews throughout the week. The best way to stay on top of everything that I'm putting out for you guys is to get subscribed to my link tree. And you can do that by going to linktr.ee slash T scary movie. If you go to my link tree, that'll give you access to the YouTube page for the video versions of the show, to your favorite podcasting platforms for the audio only versions of the show, to my letterbox page for my written reviews and my star rankings of films throughout the year, and to my TikTok page where you can find my short horror video content that I'm putting up, including my reactions to premieres that I get to go see, horror news, and occasionally me trying to be funny, but that's up to you whether I'm actually any funny or not. Hit that subscribe button on the link tree, and if you're checking this out again on YouTube or one of your podcasting platforms, hit subscribe there as well too. It helps me out, and it definitely gets me to bring you guys some more horror content, like tonight's review where I am talking the film Frogman. Now, if you have not seen Frogman yet, this is a new film brought to us by director Anthony Cousins, who also co-wrote the film with John Carsco. And it tells the story of three friends who travel to the town of Loveland to investigate an urban legend known as Frogman, a creature that roams throughout the woods. Now, we know it's not an urban legend because one of our group of three friends, Dallas, the filmmaker of this story, has encountered Frogman as a child. What got me with this film right off the jump as I dove into it was the reveal of information right away. Um, found footage movies can go a lot of different ways, obviously. And what Frogman does here isn't something that we haven't gotten before, but I just like the earnest honesty behind it because there wasn't really anything sinister about the, the exposition of information that we're giving at the beginning of this film. Dallas, who is played by Nathan Timoshuk, um, is on a family trip, and this is a home video that we're looking at, but Dallas is on a family trip, and him, is, him and his family encounter a glimpse of the Frogman in the woods. Now, since that time, Dallas has kind of taken that inspiration of what he saw and, again, has always claimed that Frogman is a real thing, even though it's been shot down. But Dallas went into the world of filmmaking, started making creature features and monster flicks, and unfortunately, they just didn't get the response that Dallas was expecting them to get. He really thought that, you know, by the time where the movie is actually set, that he could be a filmmaker. He could be a legitimate filmmaker. And I don't say that negatively, but he definitely thought that this would kind of get him into the limelight and that he'd be doing something a lot different with his life than living with his sister, kind of mooching a bit, not really having any job prospects, losing one of his best friends uh, and the possible love of his life, Amy, played by Chelsea Grant. And... In a chance encounter where his best friend Scotty, played by Benny Barnett, invites him to a going away party for Amy, who is leaving the Hollywood to make it big for herself. She signed with a talent agency, and this is her chance at a big break. Dallas decides that he's going to make one more movie, and it's going to be something that he knows. He's going to make a documentary over the legend of Frogman. Now, Scotty, who is a wedding videographer, volunteers to do the shoot for Dallas. And Scotty says Amy has to come along because if she's going to Hollywood to make it big, why not do one last starring role for something to add to her reel? And we can also get the sense here that there's definitely some uh, some Cupid's arrow pointing here going on with Scotty maybe trying to rekindle something here with Amy and Dallas. And our three are off to the town of Loveland to investigate this supposed urban legend. Now, Frogman is hilarious. I think that's one of the best parts of the movie is the fact that at a very taut hour and 17 minutes, it's not a long movie at all, we get plenty of time to understand like the nature of the relationships and friendships between these three. The fact that, you know, there might have been a moment between Dallas and Amy, but that moment definitely passed. Neither one of them chose to move forward on it. And what does that mean for their future? And Scotty being the guy that he is, is very clearly trying to see if anything can go down before these life-changing move happens for Amy. And I love that 
that because it makes all three of them more personable because Dallas is really set up not in the best light throughout this film. He's very driven because again, it kind of seems like a last chance for him and he's gonna do whatever it takes to prove this. But a lot of times that's gonna put him at odds with uh, Scotty and Amy throughout this film and not really minding his manners when they do get to the town of Loveland, trying to find all the proof that he can to back up what he knows for a fact is true. And I think that's one thing here that Cousins and Carsco does so well is that they make these three friends so likable together. It seems very much, uh, at least if you're running my circles, the kind of friends that you had back in your early to, early to late 20s at that point and hung out with and kind of did everything with and then life happens and you don't really have those kind of friends anymore. These guys seem very, very relatable when you see the dynamic of them throughout this movie and going on to another step with the way that the movie is shot you know because of, uh, of Dallas's home video where we get to see the frogman was done on high eight a lot of the creature features and monster movies that he's made over the years were also done on high eight as well too that's what we're shooting here it makes complete sense from a storytelling standpoint that that's the that's like the uh, the format that we're getting because the movie is set in modern day so of course we have the option of things like 4k cameras and that might be frustrating to somebody watching but for the storytelling it makes absolute sense here and i love that because again i i love old film formats for sure you know it very much gives me a sense of nostalgia and i think on found footage using old formats also helps you to, uh, to hide maybe some of the shortcomings that your movie could have and I, again i don't mean that in a negative light but you got a budget to work with and sometimes using an older format like high eight can help you work better with the budget that you are using and it definitely works here for sure in frogman i love the fact as well too that throughout the story as these three friends get to the town of loveland there's also a lot of information given out by various characters and we really do get to come back around to a lot of that, a lot of that information by the time the movie is done you know it's easy to take everything that they're getting in this town all the interviews that they're doing all the crazy people and even the same seem sane seemingly people it's easy to take a lot of that information and let it go in one ear and out the other but if you're really paying attention a lot of that information is going to become very very important by the time the movie is done and i love that when we get those tidbits because you don't have to necessarily set that up but it does allow you to further engross yourself in everything that's going on in this story and while it doesn't have like a lot of the sinister undertones of a lot of other found footage films like earlier on in it we do eventually move into that realm and if you were paying attention it feels even darker and even creepier because you have that info in the back of your mind when it does end up showing back up and the laughs do a great job of offsetting the scares that are eventually going to come because quite honestly the film spends the first two-thirds of it really giving us the exposition and it's that last third where things kick in the high gear at that point and it's just a sprint to the end of the film and we do get a very very complete film you know frogman is honestly a very finished film but i i love that fact that suddenly the pace picks up in the last third of it and it just doesn't stop until the credits are rolling and it's just kudos kudos to the filmmakers for what they are able to do here with this very taut story now the creature design creature design is absolutely fantastic i love the fact that we also don't get too many good glimpses of this creature um and just direct light as well too you know again i talk I, I just mentioned the idea of the format of high eight being used helps to hide some of the shortcomings that could come up and that very much enhances the effect of frogman itself because we don't just get a straight up 100 percent lit and all its glory shot of this monster and i think doing that would very much take away from it you know whether it's night vision whether it's very very low lighting whether it's you know no lighting really at all i think all those things add to the 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 nature of frogman supposed to be terrifying supposed to be this scary scary being and it works out very very well now the mythology that's involved with Frogman, that's definitely something I would love to see expanded, you know, if we were to happen to get a sequel of this. Because 
One of the more interesting things about this movie is that at 107, uh, excuse me, an hour and 17 minutes, it does very well work as a standalone film on its own, but it does almost feel anthology-like, if that makes sense. Like, you could put this in like a VHS or like a, uh, or honestly, and it's only because I love that movie so much, but I could see putting this or teaming this up or double featuring it with uh, Jed Shepard's host. Uh, because that movie itself is only like an hour long too and it's telling the same kind of found footage story, honestly. I feel that if you put those two movies together, that is such a great double billing to do. Uh, and after the credits, we do get an idea that we will see Frogman again. And I really do hope that that, that works out because I would love to see this. Now, I can't drop spoilers, obviously. You know, we got our 10 year rule to respect and everything with that. But the ending very, very much was well deserved uh and you know i'm still going through a lot of behind the scenes stuff on the blu-ray that i have there because apparently there were alternate endings they were looking into i don't know if that's going to change a lot of what the narrative of the end sets up because again dallas is very very driven throughout this story to get the proof and the story that he needs whether it's a case of this will make or break him or whether it's a case of finally getting the validation and not feeling like he's absolutely insane for years and years of telling people this story He's got to prove it. He absolutely has to prove it no matter what kind of harm he's putting himself and his friends in danger to get. And again, there's that believability behind it because we know in a lot of found footage movies, there's always the question of why are you still recording? Why are you still doing this? Why are you going there when you already know you're in danger? And again, there's a great job of storytelling here to where the only light that these characters have is coming from the camera at that point. So they have to keep shooting. Otherwise, they don't have any light because they're doing a lot of this shooting in the dark. And again, like I mentioned with Dallas, the reason why he's going to keep this recording is because it's the only proof that he can possibly get to prove what he's saying. And if he goes back empty handed, it's kind of like it's done at that point. He missed his last shot. Amy's leaving. Scotty's still his friend, but there's nothing going for Dallas at home. So if he fails at this, it's almost like his life fails as well, too. And I love that that's that drive and determination that keeps Dallas trying to get this all worked out. Honestly, y'all, I had a blast with this movie. There are some genuine scares in it. I think that it's hilarious, like I mentioned earlier, and it's short enough to where you could get through this in a single sitting, honestly, and still get time to get spooked out by something else like host of the Blair Witch Project or VHS or whatever at that point. Frogman is available on streaming services right now to purchase and to rent. You definitely got to go check this one out, folks. And I would love to know in the comment section, what is some of your favorite found footage films? Let me know what you like watching. And do you like the creature design? Because I'm telling you, Frogman in this looks fantastic. Let me know in the comments, folks. And again, hit that subscribe button because I got more reviews coming for you this week. We are diving into the omen in anticipation of the first omen this week. And we're going to hit a lot of other good ones here, folks. But that's it for me tonight. My name is T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared. Hey everybody, looking for a great way to stay up to date on horror news as well as read the best of articles on anything scary out in the world right now? Then you need to head over to the Fangoria shop and get yourself a subscription. If you go to shop.fangoria.com slash AXDW, you can use my own personalized 20% discount to save 20% off on Fangoria magazine subscriptions as well as 20% off any other items in their fantastic shop. This is a great deal. If you've ever been wanting to get yourself a subscription, now is the time to do so. Head to shop.fangoria.com slash AXDEW.